Yes, sir. Now you can start, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. You're welcome, sir. Can you see my slides? Sure, sir. We can see it. Uh, but it's half slide. Uh, is it like the full screen is not present, sir? Can you see uh -huh. now? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'd like to give a special thanks uh, to uh, B.S. Abdul Rahman Christian Institute of Science and Technology India for uh, doing this kind of uh, short term uh, training program. And I believe the participants will get the benefit from this one. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Nikki Thamja for her uh, leadership for, to organize this kind of uh, training program. As you know, that is a very difficult job because a few days you have the training program and most of the participants, they are very overwhelmed uh, with the lots of training. So uh, before going to start, I'd like to give the request to participants that uh, if possible, uh, you can turn on your camera. It is the own kind of, uh, you know, the motivation for the speaker. Uh, usually when you deliver the lecture, the festivist lecture, we never face this problem. Uh, because the participants in front of us, we can understand whether the participants are active or inactive, whether they can understand or not. Unfortunately, in the online, we are facing this problem. We can understand whether we are active or not, if the participants they can understand or not. So I let you request, if possible, uh, the participants you can turn uh, on your camera. And uh, at the end of the session, uh, I'll invite you for the query. You can ask me the question, feel free to ask any kind of question based on the lecture. <clears throat> uh, uh, I just like to make sure one thing that you notice that already the title, the Education Support Chain, Equality Outcomes. So basically, uh, we like to talk about the educational supply chain. So I think uh, if you are familiar with the supply chain, so now we like to apply that supply chain management concept in for the education institutions. And um, uh, my focusing area for today's lecture will be the tertiary education institutions. The tertiary education institutions means university. Uh, I like to start by the supply chain at first, so that if you don't have any idea on supply chain management, at least you can get some idea at first, and then you can see how we are applying the supply chain for the education institution. Uh, when you like to design the supply chain, uh, you have to ensure the three basic entities. I use this uh, term the basic entities, like raw materials, finished products, suppliers, customers, uh, flow of goods, uh, flow of uh, service, flow of information, flow of fund. Uh, raw material and finished product, uh, raw material come from the supply end and finished product will be delivered to the customer end. So that means a raw material and supply and finished product and customer, they are correlated. And then flow of goods, uh, usually we are using the flow of goods for the manufacturing industry and uh, flow of service for the service industry. Then the flow of information, basically we like to mention one thing that is integrated information. Information will be integrated and definitely the flow of fund. So this uh, flow of goods, uh, flow of information, flow of fund from supply to customer end. From supply to customer end. You know, if you ask me, oh, what is supply chain at a glance? I would say, uh, this is the one chain that will start from supply and finish the customer end. We call it a uh, supply chain. And now what you mentioned, we'd like to apply this uh, supply chain uh, for manufacturing industry as well as service industry. I don't know what it is it's too much about this part, but at a glance, we'll have to talk so that at least you can understand that when you're talking about the quality outcomes, then why you are talking about the quality outcomes. Uh, basically, this is a supply chain uh, for the manufacturing industry. Uh, so what I mentioned just now that uh, uh, raw materials, uh, finished products, supplier, customer, raw materials come up with the supply and after the processing, finished products deliver the customer end. 
and our target the supply chain so it will start from supply and finish the customer so supply to customer and now you can see uh, manufacturer distributor retailer basically uh, this three would be available or not it depends on the size of the business size of the organization say um, there is a new pharmaceutical industry new pharmaceutical industry the production capacity 500 medicine in that case, we just need the supplier, uh, manufacturer, and this factory. And then after the production, customer, they can come to the like factory, they can collect the product. Only 500 uh, medicine production capacity. So you understand, in that case, our supply chain will be supplier, uh, manufacturer, and customer. But uh, you say, uh, after one year, now your production capacity 5,000 medicine. So now you understand the 5,000 medicines. So you have to think about the another body of where you can sell your product. So we prefer the retailer. We call it the retailer outlet. So it means that after the uh, production, 5,000 production of medicine, you like to send uh, this uh, medicine to the retailer. So now if you understand the customer, they'll come to the retailer, they'll collect the product from there. So what is supply chain? Supplier, manufacturer, retailer, and customer. So look very carefully. Our production capacity change. Our supply chain is going to be changed. And now your production capacity fifty thousand. Now your production capacity fifty thousand. So if your production capacity fifty thousand, then now you can understand. Even after the production, it will be very difficult for you uh, to sell this product in the one retailer. So what I mentioned here, in that case, after the production, maybe you can think, after the production, maybe you can think how we have to sell this product to the customer. As you understand, you now your uh, production is 50,000 products. So what you can do, you can do the few something. First of all, uh, you can uh, think about the, okay, after the production, we need the one or two distribution center. So you like to send the product to the distribution center. Then a one distribution center will be responsible for the five retailers. Another distribution center will be responsible for the another five retailers. So that means at first the production will send the product to the distribution center and two distribution center, and then they will send the product to the retailers. So now you have the one factory, a two distribution center, but 10 retailers. And you supply chain the supplier, manufacturer, distributor, retailer, and customer. So what I said that manufacturer, distributor, retailer will be available or not. It totally depends on the size of the business. You know that uh, why I'm talking too much about the supply chain and the manufacturing industry as well. So that you can understand when we we'll apply the supply chain in the, our education institutions, then you can understand the feasibility of that one. <clears throat> Look very carefully. This is the basic supply chain for the service industry. If you look very carefully here, the basic supply chain, when you mention that time, you, are, you can check this one. So uh, the same things, uh, basic entities, like uh, supplier and then customer. Raw materials come from supply end. After the processing, finished product, you deal with the customer. This is a basic supply chain, okay. Flow of service, if it's service industry. Flow of information and flow of thought. Without the information, you cannot do anything. And uh, during this uh, pandemic time, we mentioned that not only that uh, analog information, we have to confront the digital information. We have to confront the virtual information. We have to confront that all information will be visible. So this is another discussion, this is later on. So now come to the point. So supplier, raw materials will come for supply, and after the processing, uh, finish uh, service provider, we get the finished product. Uh, in the manufacturing industry, I gave the example based on the, uh, based on the pharmaceutical industry medicine. So now I like to give this example in the service industry based on the hospital. If I ask you in the hospital, who are the raw materials? In the hospitals, uh, if you think that, like, uh, you uh, suppose when you are a patient, you are the raw materials. 
so now we can go to the hospital so there is a service provider service provider means hospital they will process they will process means uh, x-ray pathological test visit the doctor registration payment system everything the service provider and finally the finished product so who are the finished product you can ask this question then uh, the question will be answered will be like that the uh, recovered patient healthy patient after the recovery the same person raw materials and but finished product shape will be different and now after the treatment if you ask the customer said how about your feelings he or she can say that uh, i'm okay now this is a recovered patient so what is our supply chain here supplier service provider customer and now I'll come to the question is that what is the difference between the manufacturing industry and service industry what is the difference between the manufacturing industry and service industry if you look very carefully uh, i think you are familiar with this manufacturing industry we can understand the outcome so we call it the tangible but service industry we could not understand that outcome the intangible i think you're familiar with this one tangible and intangible so in not only that you know that if you ask this question uh, in the manufacturing industry they will say that they main target to better operation to increase the profit something like that but in the service industry you cannot say our target to increase the profit in service industry you never say this time this type of the sentence so in the service industry what is your ultimate target <clears throat> your ultimate target uh, to contribute to the society by producing quality outcomes so whatever you do in service industry your ultimate target is the quality outcomes so that you can add some values to the society yes even the service industry they get some profit but that profit will be utilized for the infrastructure development so what i said here look very carefully uh, that uh, the, we are using another body here we call it the consumer the end customer end user final customer final user so basically in the service industry the consumer is the society so in the service industry whatever you do is the ultimate target to contribute to the society to produce that uh, well-being of the society in the hospital the same thing so come to the university the same thing it is not only our target to produce a graduate our target to produce the quality graduates those could add some values to the society that is the difference in the service industry and the industry in service industry we can mention the consumer consumer in the society and you target to add some values to society on the other hand but service industry is uh, but manufacturing industry is not, is not like that manufacturing industry you can say your main target to increase the profit to enhance that operation something like that so this is the basic difference between the manufacturing industry and service industry so basically today we will use this one this concept service industry supply chain as we are talking we to talk about the like education institutions uh, there are the, uh, some applications so like uh, manufacturing industry, like the vegetable supply chain, poultry supply chain, fishing industry supply chain, ready-made garments industry, textile industry, and so on. On the other hand, the service industry, you can see there some example like education supply chain, what we we'll discussed today, hospital supply chain, tourism supply chain, banking industry supply chain, and so on. Uh, as our focusing point today, uh, education institutions, so we'll uh, let you give more emphasis on that one. Uh, before that, I'd like to remind you one issue is that uh, why we, I'm talking about the like supply chain management in the service industry or supply chain management in the education institutions. The main reason is that, you know, you have to understand why we are applying the supply chain management. There are a few reasons, so I don't want to talk too much about this one. Uh, but you see, there is a one thing we mentioned here, generating the quality outcomes. You know, if you could know your supply chain, supply chain is so supply to customer. So if you know that your chain, then it's very easy for you to understand how you can produce a quality output. If you have no idea about your chain, then it would be very difficult to think that how you could, put, could produce a quality outcomes. 
as our main target is the quality outcome. So that's why I said that we have to understand the supply chain concept. So you just remember that in the supply chain, uh, our main target will be the quality outcome. So when you talk about the university, our main target will be the quality outcomes. You know, uh, in the university, basically, we have uh, two activities, two main activities. One is that uh, we have to think about the like educational purpose, like academic purpose. So academic purpose means uh, graduates. Our target to produce a graduate, okay. And the second one, our next target is that to produce the research outcomes. Research outcomes. So now, what is the, it's not only our target to produce a graduate, to produce a research outcomes. Our target, quality graduates and quality research outcomes, so that we can add some value to the society. That's very important reason. That's why we like to have a supply chain management concept in our education institution. Okay, so you can see uh, this is historical evolution of supply chain management. So at a glance, you can see the supply chain management concept. So that now you can understand why I'm talking about that issue, that education supply chain. In 1950s, uh, basically initiated the loyalty concept. And uh, basically, uh, you know that uh, if you, anybody ask you the supply chain management, they will say it was the loyalty management. So basically, logistic is the previous form of the supply chain management, earlier form of supply chain management. So 1950s, officially started the logistic management concept. The 1970s uh, matured the logistic concept. Matured the logistic concept. And then 1980s, initiated the supply chain management concept, officially. So, uh, what I said that is very interesting thing is that uh, logistic management started the journey in the military defense. They started the journey in the defense. And then uh, after the 1970, it is uh, converting within the supply chain. And then 1980 is uh, initiated the supply chain concept. And initially, all kind of research on that uh, on supply chain management in the manufacturing industry. Particularly, flow of goods, uh, flow of materials, how they will preserve, how they will transfer something. Like and officially, supply chain management started their journey in the service industry in 1995. 1995, supply chain management in the service industry. And then, uh, that is the first initiative by the supply chain management service industry in uh, 1995. Dr. Farney developed the National Health Service. And 2007, educational supply chain management was uh, developed by the Dr. Lau. Uh, but what he did, he developed the model based on the City University of Hong Kong. Usually, any kind of uh, case study could not be generalized concept. I think you know that. And then in 2009, ITESC model was developed. That is the, uh, today I'll talk about this model. ITESC model, Integrated Tertiary Educational Supply Chain Management Model. So I just remind you again, uh, we are coming to this main discussion of the education supply chain, that our discussion is like that. But before that, I'd like to uh, talk about this one. If you look at the history of supply chain management, there is a special milestone to think the supply chain management in the education institutions. And what I said earlier is our target, the quality outcomes, how we can get the better outcomes. You know that about 87% research supply chain management in the manufacturing industry. Only 13% research supply chain management in the service industry. So what I said that uh, about 87% research supply chain management in the manufacturing industry. Only 13% research supply chain management in the service industry. Uh, it means that there is a backward. I'd like to request if you are the... Um, uh, participants, uh, in, I like to ask one qu query. Most of the participants are you a faculty member? Yes, sir. Participants, please unmute themselves. Okay. Uh, most of the participants are the faculty members or not? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Oh, all are faculty members, right? Uh, is there any PhD scholars or PhD students? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. 
So, you know, uh, if you are the faculty members, uh, we always request the faculty members that when you supervise the PhD student, then uh, you have to remember that which topic you have to choose. So that is the one two topics you can choose, supply chain management in the service industry. And because only just 13% uh, research on that area. So you can add more values there, okay? So most of the supply chain management research on the manufacturing industry, only little literature on the supply chain management in the service industry. And if you come to more specific, if you ask me, sir, education supply chain, then I would say that very few research papers on supply chain management in the academy. So that's why today our discussion on that one, very research, uh, very few research papers on supply chain management, management in the academy. Okay. Uh, this is some of the example uh, supply chain management in the manufacturing industry. And this is the RMG industry, fishing industry, textile industry. And in the service industry, you can see this is the one example of the tourism supply chain management. Uh, this is the tourism supply chain management. And uh, basically, today we talk about the education supply chain management. What is our target and uh, quality outcomes? And uh, you know that. Uh, mm, I will show you the one model I already mentioned, the name of the model, ITESC model, Integrated Tertiary Education Supply Chain Management Model. Okay. So before going to that model, I'd like to ask, do you have any question at this stage on, on supply chain? Participants, any questions? And yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Supply chain management in the services, as you said, uh, is very less. Mm -hmm. So, yes. OK, uh, you were talking about the tourism supply chain management also. So means uh, we would like to understand the supply chain management in the service industry. Yep. Yes, yes. And uh, basically today our discussion, the education supply chain is one of the example of the service industry supply, supply chain management. Okay. Any any other question? Okay, so should I proceed? You know the what I said that uh, if you yes. look, who is the supplier? You know, that's a very good question. Very good question. You know, I believe we will get your answer today when you discuss the details of education supply chain. Because this is, that's why I said that I like to talk about this one. And then you can get the idea about this one. Uh, suppose uh, but we divided the supplier as a different segment. Say human suppliers, non-human suppliers, fund suppliers. So if you ask the question for the hospital, I would say that the, first of all, that human suppliers means uh, doctor, who is the supplier of doctor, who is the supplier of the nurse, and uh, sometimes who is the supplier of the patient. Sometimes there are some people there, and they refer to the like the patient to the hospital. And non-human supply means supplier, uh, supplier uh, instrument, like uh, X-ray, pathological instrument, and then others uh, like table chair accessories. And um, the fund suppliers, the money suppliers, you have to think. Uh, so those will uh, go to the doctor. Maybe they can uh, take the, they can use their own money, or they can use it like uh, others' uh, money. So that's uh, that's why I said that. Uh, let me allow to discuss the education supply chain, so that you can get some more idea about this one. How you can apply uh, supply chain management for the other service industry. You know what I said that today. I'll show you the one model. The name of the model is the ITESC model, uh, Integrated Tertiary Education Supply Chain Management Model. And uh, as you know that uh, when you like to develop any model, definitely you have to show the previous works. We call it the theoretical frameworks. So uh, before that uh, ITESC model, uh, there are a few research on education supply chain. There are a few research on education supply chain. The first one, O'Brien and Kenneth. Uh, O'Brien Kenneth in 1986, uh, he did the research on education supply chain. Basically, he's the first one who used the term education supply chain. Unfortunately, there was no model. 
and he just did the one survey uh, conducted among the students and then employers so he did the first research but unfortunately unfortunately there was no model so that's why we couldn't use it and then in 2007 uh, Professor Lau, uh, he worked on the additional supply chain again. Uh, this time he mentioned the two uh, part, like uh, student supply chain and research supply chain, based on the City University of, of Hong Kong. You understand, this is a case study. So usually case study could not be a generalized concept. So then, uh, based on these uh, two, we designed then our model, ITESM model. So in order to understand the model, we'll discuss step by step. We'll discuss the step by step, uh, our part, so that you can understand that one, okay? And I like to request that you have to give your full attention there so that you can understand this one. And definitely, I'm expecting, say, expecting some questions from you. Okay. Uh, let us start in this way. Um, first of all, if you look very carefully in this um, holistic view of addiction subject, I think you already have some idea about supply chain management. I mentioned raw materials, I mentioned finished products, something like that. In the university, we mentioned there will be two input. There will be the two input. One is the students and the internal and external projects. One is the student and the internal and external projects. Okay. So this is a two input. We call it supply input. And then the pro after the processing um, university process service provider will get the two output. One the research outcomes and other graduates. Research outcomes and other graduates. The two output. And uh, finally, uh, uh, do you want to see the full screen, right? Just a minute. Yes, sir. Now we are getting the full screen, sir. It is a better, right? Yes, it's better, sir. But I could not see you. This is the problem. Okay. Yeah, this is a full screen, sir. Yeah, wait. Is it good for you, right? Yes, sir. It's yeah. clearly visible for us. Yeah, okay, no problem. So what I said that, uh, if you look very carefully, that uh, we identified uh, this whole supply chain, that uh, two raw materials, input external projects and students. So we assume that uh, raw materials means input side. And after the process, you get the output. So you call it the finished product side. So finished products, uh, this is the outcomes and graduates. Okay. So it means that uh, storage will be converted to the graduate. Internal, external project will be converted to these outcomes. And the, our main target, what I said earlier, contribute to the society. So that's why today we mentioned this term that uh, quality outcomes. So this is not our target to produce a graduate. This is not our target to produce the outcomes. Our target to produce a quality graduates, quality outcomes. So that uh, outputs will be contributed to the society. I just remind you one issue is that you just remember one thing that uh, we mentioned here. We mentioned here raw materials as a supply input. We mention here raw materials as a separate input and the finished product as a separate output. So that means uh, uh, in next slide, so when you use the term raw materials, then you can understand you're talking about the separate input. If you like to match a finished product, that means you're talking about the like the separate output. And now come to the question is that what I mentioned here, uh, how it will be processed, though I mentioned clearly that input, process, and output. But now come to the question is that how we can ensure this one, input, process, and output. That is our discussion in the next few slides. You can see this one. 
But at a glance, this is an addition supply chain. The raw materials after the processing, finished product, then delivered to the consumer, the society. Uh, simplified form of supply chain management for the universities. Uh, it's very simplified form. Uh, you can see this one. Like uh, you remember earlier, we mentioned that the basic supply chain for the service industry. That time I showed this one. I demonstrated this one. So look very carefully. There will be the supplier, and then the service provider means university, and the customers, finally the consumer. We divided supply into two segments: additional suppliers and research suppliers. Additional suppliers and research suppliers. Okay. And uh, we assume that in the university, uh, there should be uh, four activities. Education development, education assessment, research development, research assessment. So what we mentioned here, education development, education assessment, research development, research assessment. So you just remember when you talk about the university, that means we are assuming four activities. I will explain these uh, things. What is this? Let's know. And then uh, customers, we uh, again we divided the customers into two segments uh, additional customers and research customers. And finally, uh, our outcomes, uh, final finished products will be delivered to the consumer, the society. So now come to the point one by one. I'll give you the example in the next slide about the suppliers. Okay, I'll give you the example of the customer in the next slides. And what I said in the last slide, do you remember that raw materials means supply inputs? How many input? Two inputs. What is that? Internalized research projects and students. And you remember in the last slide you mentioned finished products means supply output. What is that? Two. One is that uh, graduates and these outcomes. If you look very carefully, there are the few uh, from the service provider to the customers. You can see we mentioned here customer consuming output and customer supply input. Look very carefully. I think you understand customer consuming output means what I said earlier finished products, but customer supply input. Uh, some few graduates after the graduation, so they may be. Uh, they can pursue the higher studies in that university. Or maybe they can join the university as a staff. So that, that's why you're giving the arrow in the opposite direction. They can again enter the university, and again they'll take the service from the university. Okay. And now, you see this one. Uh, we mentioned four activities. Addition development, addition assessment, research development, research assessment. Uh, I think you know the development means suppose if you launch the new program, if you launch the new program, new institution, a new manager, this is a development. But what you said that development is an Anna, we need the like assessments. So it should be the concurrently. A development assessment should be done concurrently. Yeah. And uh, what I said that if you say that we have the like 200 um, department, 200 major. Yeah, it's a development, but question is all major, all departments are required for the students or not. That's why you have to confirm this one. Uh, same things, there is a development assessment. Uh, we can do the research, we can publish the papers. But you know that uh, uh, whatever you do, you have to confirm the assessment. Question is the quality of journal paper, quality of research, quality of conference, quality of training programs, something like that. So now, we are delivering the training program. See, this is our developer, it's a developer, no doubt. But the uh, question will be there how about the assessment? And that's why you see that even after the training program, we have uh, some, you have some, uh, some uh, exam, right? You have to do this. We like to confirm that what is this. So, <clears throat> there is one faculty member, he said he has uh, like 100 publication. Okay, that's fine. But he said that he published nine, 90 articles in the newspaper. 
usually newspaper articles will not be accepted if you think the assessment that's why i said that the four activities edition development edition assessment research development research assessment four things okay and finally what you mentioned here supply output will deliver to the like consumer the society okay so this is a simplified form of supply chain management for the university okay and it has come up from the earlier one uh do you have any question at this stage so what is the difference between customers and consumer that's a good question uh you just be patient uh, we are coming uh, the examples of the edition customers this is customer then you can understand just at a glance i would say uh, consumer uh, means that uh, this is and customer and user and uh, consumer means the final destination the customer is a part of the consumer so that that's why i say that customer means uh, the first level of the customer this is the first uh, those will get the benefit but the consumer means and customer so as you what i said that you mentioned that uh, the society you see uh, in the educational institutions if i ask you who are the customers main customer is the employers employers of the organization and then employers of the organization they are the main customer but what i said that employers they'll get the benefit uh, after the graduation students will get the benefit their parents will get the benefit so they are also part of that one but when you say that the consumer the society that means what i will do you ultimately get how you can add values to the society so i'll come back to this uh, to this question again but i'll let show you a few more slides on that one any other question at this stage if you no question i'd like to proceed okay uh, i have a, uh, uh, uh as there is a your lecture is at um, uh, around the two hours so i think it's better we should take the break for the five minute and then we'll come back again okay uh, but i like to request uh, that i do not want to take the long break just for, for a five minute break and then we'll continue this session again i remind you that uh, uh, our session is around two hours so that's why i like to take the on short break okay so uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, Nikita, how are you there? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. So uh, we, we can now take the break for the five minutes. Sure, sure, sir, sure, sir. Just take five. We are no, going no, to no. start after five minutes. Okay, thank you so sure, much. Sure, sir, sure, sir. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Most welcome. Participants also can take five minutes break. After which, uh, Mamun sir will just uh, continue the sessions. participants can also mute unmute and ask questions in between
can you continue now participants yes sir, you can continue sir they, they are still on the uh, home yeah participants sir has joined again thank yes, you yes sir you can continue sir thank you sir you know the most important thing of what you said earlier that uh, we have to understand that uh, all uh, terms like uh, what you say uh, eight different suppliers uh, these are suppliers so i'll talk about this uh, this thing i'll talk about the customers then i'll come back again here uh, integrated supply chain for the universities okay uh, so you know that uh, we divided that eight different suppliers in three segments what i said for the hospital supplier as well that the uh, human supplier, uh, non-human suppliers, and uh, fund supplier, money supplier. Okay, human supply in the uh, university, the suppliers of the student, suppliers of the faculty members. I just give you some few examples so you can think. Uh, uh, you just think that uh, there are some university in the world they have own school, own college. Say, uh, 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 Assumption University, Assumption College, Assumption School, McDonald University, McDonald College, uh, McDonald uh, School. So look, there's some link. The school, college, and university. And not only that, I just give you another example. Uh, Stanford University. STAN, Stanford University. I think it's the Royal uh, Rank University number four five. So I visited the Stanford University in 2011. You know, I was surprised to see that that, that was a summer time. And uh, I noticed in the university that there, uh, there were lots of kids. They were taking the picture with their parents. I was surprised. And then I explore, I discuss with them. They say uh, the Stanford University, they have some provision with some schools to open the uh, summer camp, during the summer time. During the summer time, the schools, they can open the summer camp. But my uh, question to you, what do you think? Say from your point of view, if you are uh, taking the picture in the Stanford University at the age of eight to ten, so it would be one kind of motivation for you that you take the admission to the Stanford University later on. And is it necessary for the Stanford University to keep the relation with this school? Because what I say is supply of the student. Okay. Uh, some of the faculty members, uh, I already mentioned, uh, you have to think about the like uh, different university, adjunct faculty members, they are also teaching. Come to the next one, non-human suppliers. Uh, so non-human suppliers, suppliers of the furniture, university, computer, network, any, like uh, stationary materials, uh, instruction materials, something like that. So this is the non-human supplier. And the third one, the fund supply, money supply, who will uh, provide the fund, registration fees. Most of the cases, family members or siblings or maybe the, the spouse or maybe the own funding, self-funding. So maybe there is some scholarship program for the government uh, level or the private level. So this is also the uh, part of the funding. Uh, maybe in the uh, particular the PhD level, it would be self funding or university could they could put some fund. So basically, this is a fund suppliers, money suppliers. Okay. So what is said there? Additional suppliers we divided the three segment: uh, human supplier, non-human supplier, and uh, then a fund supplier, money supplier. Okay. And the next one, these are suppliers. Uh, you remember I mentioned earlier that internal external access project. Internal external access project. There are two types of project, right? Internal research project means self-funding. Internal research project means university self-funding. University self-funding means, uh, suppose university, they have to create this research, research project for their faculty members, for their students. 
and um, uh, you know that university they are they are, they will finance the faculty member those will be the resources we call it university self funding this is project okay and second one the university uh, supply of the external research project external research project so maybe the ministry of education they will provide the, some uh, research project or maybe the external body, if they provide the income project. Say, suppose the private organization, uh, like a different type of private organization, if they do some research work and they like to request the university to contribute. So this fund will come from the outset. Uh, IEEE, ACM, they are also providing some of the research fund for the perspective researchers. So this is the external front. Yeah. So suppliers of the external research project. So I said that there is a project with two types of research project, one is internal research project and the external research project. So there are two types of suppliers. You just remember the suppliers with those who will fund it. Those will fund this research project. Okay, and then they will try to get the findings for them. So now let us see that our customers. Education customer. Okay, education customer. What kind of education customer? I think I already mentioned that your employers. Employers of the public or private organization, government or private organization. Usually, pub, uh, employers, they'll get the direct benefit from the graduates. So that's why this is there, the education customers. In addition to that, uh, the, uh, our graduates, they are also additional customers. Family members, those will get the benefit. You know that when they graduate, one student will be graduated. His family members, his siblings, his relatives, they will get the benefit. What kind of benefit? It is not that necessary that uh, everywhere you have to contribute to the society. But if you are not the burden of the society, this is also the adding something to the society. After the graduate, you're doing the job, so you're not burdened for others. That's enough. Okay. So what I said is that all are the edition customers. Now come to research customers. Basically, those uh, will provide the fund for the research. Research. They will try to get something from the research finding. So, but what I said earlier that uh, customer means funding organization of this project or this is outcomes. Your research outcome is also kind of uh, research customers. What kind of? Look very carefully. We mentioned earlier that uh, you mentioned, we mentioned earlier that. Uh, in that uh, you funding organization like uh, internal or external so whatever they are doing after the funding they like to get some benefit from there what kind of say uh, you after the research finish the research you will publish the uh, research project right and from there you will publish this one to the india different international conference proceedings or journal paper something like that who knows based on the research project you can publish the books you can publish the books based on the research project. So what I said that your research findings also the uh, also the research uh, customers. So we mentioned here you see the researcher research publication, conference paper, journal paper, book chapter, books, findings, etc. The research customers. On the other hand, if you see that like uh, what I said earlier, suppose if I triple E. If the IEEE, ACM, they provide the funds, so they will also get the benefit from the research findings. So they are also the research customers. So that means those will get the benefit. Those will get the benefit from the research uh, findings. That is the research customers. So what we mentioned here, look very carefully. What we mentioned here, our uh, research customers, we have to check. Those will get the benefit by the research. Okay, so it is not the necessary every time the direct uh, outcome. 
sometimes maybe you can get that uh, research publication or maybe there's this findings will be published at different uh, platform this is also there's the customers okay so we have done this one uh, do you have any question at this stage regarding suppliers and customers any question please participant can unmute and ask the questions any questions participants uh, i think there's no okay. questions so you can continue sir thank you so now this is the look very carefully uh, you remember earlier we mentioned holistic view of education supply chain i mentioned earlier holistic view of education supply chain a simplified problem of supply chain manager for the universities now integrated supply chain for the universities i said integrated you know integrated format what is this we divided this on the two segment this oval shape divided by the two segment additional supply chain resource supply chain okay and in the additional supply chain there is the addition uh, the top level uh, is a top view you can see this one and then this is supply chain the bottom view so in the addition supply chain uh, you can see addition supplier then you can see the student supply input and then the university addition development addition assessment and then uh, graduates from there and uh, definitely graduates will contribute to these customers finally the consumer the society so look very carefully this is a top view addition suppliers the students the addition development assessment in university graduates and then this is customers finally the consumer the society and then uh, sub, uh, this is the, if you call it the research supply chain bottom view then i can see there is project uh, we'll come up on the research suppliers, so suppliers, this is project input, this is a development assessment in the university, and then it's outcomes from there, and for that will contribute to the research customer, finally, finally the society, consumer. Look very carefully. Whatever you say, additional supply chain or research supply chain, your ultimate target to contribute to the society. It's very interesting thing, sir. So whatever you will follow, addition supply chain or recent supply chain, your ultimate target, how you could add the fellows to the society. Okay. And now if you look very carefully here, the oval shape. Our first oval shape is the supplier. Right? Check the oval shape. Our first oval shape is the suppliers. Addition suppliers, this is the suppliers. Our second oval shape, the supply input, the students and its project. Our third oval shape is the four activities: initial development, initial assessment, initial development, initial assessment. And next oval shape, our outcomes. We call it the separate output. What is said here? Uh, look very carefully, graduates and uh, its outcomes. Finally, there is customers. And then uh, our addition customers, customers body. And finally, the consumer, the society. So if you look very carefully, integrated supply chain, overall, you can see the first oval shape supplier, then oval shape supply input, then oval shape the university, then oval shape that uh, supply in uh, output, then oval shape the customers, finally the consumers. Integrated supply chain. So whatever we do in the additional supply chain, supply chain, our ultimate target, how it could contribute to the society. So you target the society, you have to design. Now you have to think that oh, what type of graduates do you need? What type of uh, what type of program? do you need in the university society driven uh, supply chain okay. so this is the integrated supply chain for the university uh, is there any question at this stage 
Any questions, participants? If you have any question, you can raise the hand or you can just send the. Uh, the you can also the do it in chat box. Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah. You can also raise your questions in chat box, sir. Right. Yeah. So now come the next one three different level in the university. So um, uh, now it is uh, another one discussion is that uh, you can see the three different level in the university. So we can apply the three different level in the university. You know, a uh, three decision level, uh, this is a uh, strategy, planning, and operating level. Okay. Uh, if you look very carefully, uh, when you talk about the three decision level, strategy, planning, operating level, the first thing will come up with, it is applicable in the uh, service industry or education institutions? Yes. It is applicable. How you could apply? Uh, we are familiar with the manufacturing industry or we are familiar with the corporate, right? So usually in the corporate, we say the top level management. We say the middle level management. We say the line level manager. But you can, it's very interesting that it is also applicable in service industries, particularly the university. If you see in the university, if I ask you the strategic level means top level management. The top level management university, by chancellor, provide chancellor, board of trustees, chairman, something like that. And the planning level means a dean, program director, director, something like that. And then operating level means a regular officer, regular faculty member, something like that. So this is operating level. What is it? The faculty, staff, something. Like that. From the three decision level, you'll also get the two output. You'll get also two output. What is that? The graduates. Another is the research outcomes. What I said that, look very carefully for the you, whatever you do, the three decision level you complete it. From there, you'll get the graduates and its outcomes. And that will contribute to the society. So that means those are three decision level, you can apply this three decision level uh, for the university. What I said, the top level university, um, uh, like strategic level decision makers. Board of Trustees, Board of Directors, uh, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, something like that. And then planning level and then operating level. So you can see, I will show, I will apply this three decision level in our model. Go to the next one. Uh, uh, so you see the strategic level decision in the universities. I already mentioned strategic level means top level management. So this is a top level discussion. What is that? You see, university at first, and then for university education research. Okay, that's fine. Then we mentioned here the education part, academic development, academic assessment, research part, research development, research performance assessment. Okay, and uh, you have to ensure this one. You have to ensure this one, and how will you do the ensurement? So what I said that, look very carefully. We mentioned here, academic development, I already mentioned. You can launch the new major, it's a development, but you have to do the check the assessment at the same time. When you have the development, you have to check the assessment as well. So yeah, assessment, you can check by the survey. Based on the graduating student, you can do the survey. Same things, there is a performance assessment, this is development. So now we uh, suppose the uh, your university they are arranging this kind of faculty training program. The next question will be come up: What is the outcome of the faculty development training program? And that's why we like to do the assessment. Okay, so this something. So what I said that so the development and assessment concurrently it will be done. Okay. And uh, what I said that uh, academic development, you can uh, design them uh, any kind of course, any kind of uh, program, but the question will be there. Is it feasible? 
So I just give you an example so you can think. Uh, if you go to a tourist country like Singapore, like Thailand, you know, um, they have the like uh, uh, tourism in uh, different course on tourism. Very normal. Because their academic development is social demand. You see, India is very strong in the IT. You see, in the India, most of the universities, they should have the IT department. And then what you said that we have to check the assessment as well so that you can understand our development is standard or not. Okay. So uh, whatever I said earlier, you target the graduates and these outcomes, but we have to ensure that we have to follow these steps so that we can under, uh, we can get the quality graduates and quality outcomes. Uh, basically, these are our final outcomes. These are our final outcomes. Uh, and graduates, it is our quality and quality quality outcomes. So now uh, we are coming to our uh, our ultimate targets in the education supply chain. And what you mentioned earlier that uh, this is not our target only just to produce the graduates. Our target to produce that quality graduates. Our target to produce the quality outcomes. And what I said earlier, that that's why we are designing that education supply chain. So now let's see uh, how we can design that our uh, quality graduates. You know, uh, we said that quality graduates uh, depends on the uh, a few factors. And we divided these factors into two segments. Uh, graduates benchmarking, graduates value enhancement. Graduates benchmarking uh, includes the knowledge the tested and explicit knowledge, skills, competences, uh, the capabilities, okay, develop program, something like that. And on the other hand, uh, graduates' uh, value enhancement includes the source of fund, self funding, or scholarship, wisdom, faculty capabilities, facilities, ICT, this is involvement, etc. So that means if any uh, university graduate uh, can follow this kind of characteristics, if they have this kind of characteristics, you can see the quality graduates. So I like to explain a few of them uh, so that you can understand what is this. Uh, first of all, you see, we mentioned graduates benchmarking. In the graduates benchmarking, uh, we mentioned here like knowledge, uh, competency, capabilities, ethics, uh, development programs. Can you imagine there are a few universities in the world, they have an option. They have an option that, uh, uh, that uh, students will not get the certificate until joining the two ethics seminars. Students will not get the uh, certificate until joining the uh, two ethics seminar. And it's very interesting thing is that the suppose uh, it not meaning is that it not meaning is that uh, if you join the uh, ethics seminar without the your course finishing you'll get certificate no it means that you have to finish the your regular credit suppose 126 credit to finish your undergrad or something but you must join the two ethics seminar during that time two ethics seminars and you know that most of the cases, this ethics seminar will be held on the weekend. Most of the cases, this uh, ethics seminar, usually it will be held in the weekend. So now you understand. So the and this the ethics seminar is a three hours lecture. And you know that uh, they are giving lots of examples in the ethics seminar. And now my question is that you just think, if any student, and they get the idea about the ethics seminar at the age of uh, suppose university undergraduate level that definitely they got some idea about the ethics yes you can ask me now the professor what do you think that they will understand this ethics at this level at this age i would say that uh, whatever understanding you have we have to provide say do you remember in the childhood when you have as a childhood there was a uh, physical exercise class do you remember in our childhood there was a physical exercise class and the physical exercise class 
we could not understand what is the significance of physical exercise at that time, right? Now at this age, now we understood that yes, physical exercise is very important. In remember in the childhood, there was a class of, uh, we call it the drawing class. The drawing class. And if you ask uh, the, what is the significance of the drawing class, uh, in that time we could understand what is significant. Now we understood this drawing class was very important. Creativity innovation. Yeah. We mentioned here career development programs. You know, every university, they should have the career development program. They should have. So they will work for the uh, students and they should have the care the center. They're responsible for this one. Yeah. And the second one, uh, graduate value announcement. Uh, you know that if I ask you that strength uh, quality depends on the, uh, on the faculty members. If you look very carefully, if you notice that, your uh, faculty member, they are the rich in terms of knowledge, in terms of academic results, in terms of community service. Look, faculty member rich in their knowledge, students, they could be knowledgeable from the faculty members. So it comes from their faculty capabilities. It is not like that your faculty members, uh, your students, they deliver the lecture, they don't have the international exposure. They didn't have the research works and then how they deal with the lecture in front of the students. So now comes the question is that how we have to determine our faculty members' quality. You can determine the faculty members' quality in the three segments, like academic, uh, academic result, research, and finally the community service, this is faculty capabilities. And then uh, uh, facilities, what kind of facilities? You know, any university, they should have the like, uh, uh, we call the state of the art, uh, teaching facilities and research facilities. Uh, it means that teaching facility means in the classroom, we have to use the like a multimedia projector or smart board, something like that. And there should have the like, journal, international journal, uh, Scopus in the journal paper, uh, journal, or the web of science in the journal, something like that. All kinds of facilities, modern facilities. Research involvement. All strength for them to become the researcher. No need. But they have to get the idea of the research. This involvement is very important. And it could be there like uh, mandatory for all students, they should be involved in the research. But I would say that if this initiative will start from the uh, student, from the faculty members, from the university. They have to provide the all kinds of arrangements so that the students they can think about the research in, in involvement. So without this uh, kind of characteristic, we couldn't think that graduates uh, benchmark would be possible. So I like to remind you again, we are talking about the few factors. Those are, those are the involved in the graduates with uh, deserved quality. Now come to the next one, the quality research outcomes. Quality research outcomes. If you see the quality quality outcomes, I would say that in this way, you have to check this one properly, like problem solution, pure theory, international research project, findings, applications, etc. You know, this very interesting thing is that, it's very interesting thing is that your research findings is the, it could be the one kind of research paper. And we are expecting the quality research from our graduates. We are expecting that quality research from our faculty members. So that's why you said that uh, quality is outcomes. Uh, you can publish the paper in the, any kind of peer reviewed journal, but if you could publish the paper in the Web of Science in the journal, quality is outcomes. And you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can produce the theory. Basically, you know that in the PhD level, we always mention that you target to produce the theory to produce a model. So what I mentioned here, the, so your ultimate target, that uh, if you produce a model, that means this model will be applicable in the near future. So prospect research, they can start on your model. So that means the continuation of the research source. That is the example of the quality outcomes. 
you know, today I've discussed this part, uh, education supply chain management, it comes from my uh, PhD level. During the PhD time, I did the research on the education supply chain management. And then based on that, I published a few journals, I published a few conference papers, I published a few books on that one. Education supply chain management. Okay. So now come to the question. Our discussion today comes from the book. And that book comes from the, like, uh, suppose from my PhD level. So what I said from the PhD level, I produce a few books based on the uh, research work. So that is the we call it quality outcomes. Means it's not like that you are doing the research now, that's finish. Everything done, I have done everything. No, 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 no. You are doing the research for the future. And there should be some continuation of the research project. So quality outcomes. Okay. Okay, so we already understand uh, that uh, we are going to discuss this model. That is our main target. Okay, so we mentioned a few main activities uh, in the university, uh, like education development, education research, development assessment. I think I already discussed, right? So no need to talk about this one. And then the four factors. Program establishment, university culture, faculty capabilities, and facilities. What is that? <clears throat> you know, if you produce any new major, new course, new program, this is program programs establishment. Okay. Uh, university culture is, means that uh, the prestige, prestige of the university, personal of the university. So what I said that uh, if you look very carefully, university culture, say suppose this university, uh, Abdul Rahman uh, Christian Education, this one, why they're uh, arranging uh, this kind of uh, six days training program? So that means it is a culture of the university. All universities, they're not arranging. So this is something you have to understand. And then you have to understand this one. Faculty capabilities. I already mentioned faculty capabilities will determine three factors uh, academic result, research contribution, and the community service. And facilities, we are talking about two types of facilities modern facilities for the teaching, modern facilities for the research. Okay. So, what I said that uh, basically we have to use these four main activities. Edition development, edition assessment, is development, is assessment, and uh, four factors uh, for program establishment, uh, university culture, faculty capabilities, uh, and the facilities, four factors. So uh, we'll use these uh, four main activities and four factors in your model. So basically, this is our model. This is our model, and that will be the very important discussion. You know that if you ask me, if you ask me about this model, first of all, I like to mention one thing is that this is that our ultimate model. And you know that earlier we discussed holistic view, we discussed integrated supply chain, uh, we discussed that uh, different types of suppliers, customers, and final outcomes, everything. Because our main target is this model. Okay. So now I, I'm going to discuss this model. I, before that, I'd like to confirm one thing that everybody are with me. Yes, sir. Participants. Participants, please unmute themselves from the. They don't want to talk to me. No, sir. That is not like that. They uh, are there very well, sir. Yeah. We are there. Okay, I noticed there is a few questions in the chat box. So we, I'll reply this uh, all chat box question just after the session. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see, in this model, uh, basically there are three parts, three components. The first one that uh, the left side research supply chain, uh, right side in the research supply chain, left side education supply chain. And then middle one, the edition management. So basically, uh, ITESM. I just remind you again the the full uh, 
the full meaning of the ITESM model, integrated tertiary educational supply chain management model. Integrated tertiary education supply chain management model. Okay, in this model, there are three parts. Uh, one is the education supply chain, research supply chain, and education management. Okay, you see in the education supply chain, education suppliers, and then uh, students will come from there. And then you can see uh, that will go to the university. That will go to the university. So, uh, education suppliers, uh, students, and then university. And from the university, you have to produce the quality graduates, education customers, finding the consumer and the society. On the other hand, research supply chain, <coughs> research suppliers, then research project will come from there. That will go to the university, university body. And after the university processing, we'll get the quality outcomes. This is our target to get. And that will add the values to the end customer, finally the society. Okay. And now middle section. Middle section. Is, you can see the middle section. Uh, look very carefully. There are four activities. Edition development, edition assessment, edition development, edition assessment. We already mentioned the last slide, four main activities. Okay. Now you can see. Uh, Can you see this model properly? It, it will be better if uh, it can be a little uh, more zoomed in. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. This, uh, this seems better. Yes, Professor. Is it OK? Not now. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. OK? A little better, yes. This seems better. OK. You know that the main problem is online. It is not the real time. Sometimes there is a uh, lacking of uh, few seconds. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do understand that. <laughs> OK. So what I said that, uh, look very carefully. Uh, basically, this is the addiction management. and. Uh, and what he said earlier that our target ultimate quality outcomes. So basically, it will come from here. And we mentioned that education development, education assessment, development assessment. And we mentioned the four active, four factors in the university: uh, program establishment, university culture, faculty capabilities, and facilities. Okay. And do we use a short name? We will use the short name. And uh, basically, we P is a program establishment. I think I already explained it in that if you open any kind of major, any kind of department, this is that one. But if you look very carefully, at first we mentioned four activities. Now we mentioned four factors. So these four factors available in the um, in the four activities. It means education development, education assessment, research development, research assessment. And we also mentioned three decision level. What I mentioned earlier, do you remember that tradition level, strategic planning and operating level? Okay. And uh, uh, what I said earlier, that the development assessment must be done concurrently. That's why you see there is a uh, interconnectivity. Okay. And I just remind you again, just let it, uh, we can let us read the one one so that you can understand. Uh, you see that uh, strategic level in addition development. Uh, so academic strategies formulation. And then uh, you can see the assessment part, academic uh, quality assessment strategies. And the research development part, uh, research strategy formulation. And this assessment part, research performance evaluation strategies. So you can see the strategic level, you can see the planning level, you can see the operating level. OK? So the, so the um, three decision level will be applicable in this model. So I again remind you that what I said here, that our three components, so education, uh, education supply chain, it's a supply chain, education management. And remember one thing we mentioned: four activities and four factors and three decision level. 
okay so this is the ITESC model so now any question at this stage about this model just about this model I will come back to finish the whole topics just ITESC model any question okay now uh, you remember I mentioned here that the model stands for integrated tertiary research management model and uh, basically we did this research the, uh, like 2008-2009 uh, uh, during my PhD time and after that uh, after my PhD there are a few research going on based on this model the ITSC model and not only that uh, this model uh, already is uh, applicable to the different universities in the world Okay, uh, the university in the uh, different university in the Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia, India, they are using this model particularly. So this that's why we discuss this model today. Okay, now come to the point. Uh, what is the advantage for the like? Uh, come to the point. What is the advantage of this model? The main uh, advantage of this model is that you see you can understand how you can produce a quality outcome. How you can produce so you can see that every each parameter they need to decide. That's why we mentioned earlier that our target quality outcomes, quality graduates, and quality research outcomes. Okay, okay, so but I don't want to discuss too much about the efficient guidelines, but I'd like to remind you again that uh, already this model uh, applicable in the different country in the world uh, for the universities, and there are a few PhDs going on based on this model. On open PhD student, he finished his PhD in 2006. 18 based on this model okay and he like he designed that sustainable education supply chain management model okay sustainable education supply chain management model for the Malaysian universities but he is using this model as a reference okay okay of uh, our uh, based on this uh, model we, we use a, a structural regression modeling sam technique under the emos and then we got some few findings i don't talk in details i just mentioned at a glance about the findings uh, first of all the good governance for any university good governance is the highest priority and we would say that to foster the good governance uh, on its uh, um, good governance in the university uh, the most important critical thinking is this how you could select this uh, good, good governance how you could select these key executives uh, you know the key executives should be the good governance you have to think this one they should be the like ethical issues ethical standard okay so they have to manage it the good leadership you see that you're by chancellor. Say that thing about by chancellor. You should be the good leader, high visionary, ethical leader, motivation, high motivation, something like that. It's basic. You know that if you think about the like the, the uh, efficient guidelines, what this is basic for. Okay. The secondly, faculty members recruitment. I already mentioned this one. You know. It is our normal custom that we are too much dependent on the faculty members, the academic result. But academic result is nothing. Academic result is not nothing. And nowadays, I would say that you need some more experience. We need some more experience. Uh, you know, faculty members' experience uh, give him uh, or give her a different environment in the classroom. Okay. So this is some things you have to so you have to check the like uh, academic result okay and their uh, their experience uh, so it could be like teaching and research as well and finally uh, you have to check the faculty members should be the uh, should be the you know uh, highly ethical in terms of the empathy in terms of the like emotional intelligence something like that they have to understand they have to understand the the uh, students attitude their student emotion as well that's why the faculty recruitment is a key factor in the university to produce the quality graduates 
And the different programs enrichment, uh, you know, program enrichment, I think I already explained, that depends on not only just uh, and the uh, social demand, it's also a bit different, the global phenomena, uh, as well as the job requirement. So you have to check the regular assessment of this one. The next one, the qualification center. In uh, university, they should have think of the qualification center. Basically, they're responsible for the quality outcomes in the uh, research. Quality is, uh, assessment center is very important. Okay, I don't want to talk too much about this one. Uh, basically, this uh, come, uh, you can see the values. It's come up from our uh, structure lecture modeling, SAM technique, that's for the MOS, we got it. I don't want to talk too much about this one. Just remember, I mentioned that uh, research center is very important. So the next question will come out that how we can manage this research project and other something. So it's a part of the university. They have to decide about this one. And we designed the, um, on the suitability index uh, so that best so that we have to come to the decision whether the university, they are doing a good operation or not. Uh, basically, this is a uh, ITSM model development is an empirical study uh, and uh, uh, we investigate in details about the input process and output, but uh, actual implementation depends on the university. But uh, we can say that uh, this model functions the stakeholders uh, of the supply chain with their proposed strategies to review and apprise their preference toward fulfillment of ultimate goals. So two goals, uh, uh, quality graduates, quality outcomes. And this model was the two main contribution to the end customer, the society. One is the human resource contribution, and this is contribution. Human resource contribution uh, by producing quality graduates, this is contribution by producing by producing the uh, quality is outcomes. So you know, well-being of the society would be possible uh, if we could produce the quality graduates, quality outcomes. But totally depends on how you do this one. Okay. But if we manage this education supply chain, what we discussed today, I think it's not very difficult to manage from the uh, from supply to the customer and from the raw materials to the finished product. Okay. okay, so that's all uh, from the lecture. Uh, now this is the time for you. You can ask me any question freely. Uh, if you go back to our chat box, uh, so there is a few questions. So can I start from the chat box? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in government colleges, if the education is provided free of cost for upliftment, will be the basic supply, basic supply chain remain the same. Uh, Chandra Kumar, are you there? Chandra Kumar, are you there? Chandra Kumar, sir. Okay, so I can say this way. Sir, but like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, he's there, but he's, yes. Yeah, so no problem. I can explain to you. Even the education is probably free of cost, but the supply chain will remain the same. Remain the same. Sir, are you, have you any questions, sir, Praveen, sir? And the, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and let me finish this uh, this one. Uh, uh, Chandra Kumar is another question. In the decision levels, operating, sure, level, sure, can, sure. operating level can also provide feedback to top level. Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, it's very common phenomenon is that, uh, as you notice, that uh, the top level, uh, uh, this is the strategic level, planning level, operating level. Uh, but operating level means the faculty members. They have a direct connection with the students. So. Uh, the strategic level decision maker, top level manager, they should communicate with the operating level to understand the view of the students. And that's why easily there should be the faculty meeting and then a uh, one-to-one -one meeting as well. Okay. Yeah, please, next question, please. Yes, um, a very good morning. Uh, thank you for your insightful uh, model of the education system. What I want to ask is basically, uh, the education industry is going through the consolidation phase, right, the, in India. So uh, when these acquisitions and mergers happen in education space, 
so while uh, what should be taken care with reference to this model uh, uh, what you have proposed yeah even uh, is there any kind of acquisition and merge uh, is going on uh, but did you notice that uh, that uh, main activity is the same okay and not only not only that uh, if you look very carefully even if you ask this question what is the outcome of the colleges what is the outcome of the university same things graduates what are you produce the graduates now come to the question is that uh, the quality graduates that is our ultimate target and number two yes they may be uh, there will be some uh, of the like uh, research outcomes it could be like it be changed suppose uh, some of the university their main focusing for teaching some of the college main focusing for the teaching without the research but i believe now it is changing most of the college and university they are like to give the more concentration on the research but if you go back to the usa us you can see <coughs> in the university about the uh, 60 to 70% activities belongs to the research only 30 to 40% activities to the teaching but our south south asian country our culture is different we are giving more emphasis on the teaching if that is the maybe it could be the one kind of uh, difference uh, in the modern Okay. Mm, so thank you very well uh, said sir thank you yeah most welcome right. next question please nobody is camera uh, open uh, is it possible uh, for participants participant uh, could open the yeah, camera yeah, is possible open camera please participants That's please open your camera any question please participants any questions rafiq sir any questions sir no sir no sir. just switch on the camera okay participants any questions if you have no more question then i like to do my concluding uh, remark anu ma'am any questions anu ma'am sir wh uh, what do you feel about the evaluation system uh, in the universities to produce the quality graduates uh, yes, yes. Uh, that is the something so what you say that uh, if you think that like uh, we have to include the research activities within our uh, teaching system so when you in include the research activities within our teaching system then our evaluation will be the more uh, realistic uh, because otherwise the, what happened that you know that uh, all of the bookish knowledge and the, all are the like the memorizing so our assessment is very straight to that one so that they can memorize they can do that one so this is not the fair at all however uh, i what i said earlier we are now changing assessment also they try to change and move to the like the different level even you know that now it is i think the analytical question like subjective question will be there the more explanation will be there rather than just uh, just write down the powerpoint slides or write down the books but uh, for the assessment uh, again i remind you that it also depends on the faculty members so their knowledge is very important and that's why you should think about their their recruitment at first so that they can do add some values to the assessment policy but again i remind you that uh, we should not ask the question directly that uh, write down this definition write down this one so that uh, it will be the different way they can explain Uh, so mm -hmm. if you ask the question that uh, what is the uh, your uh, role and activities as operation manager what would be the your then they can explain or maybe you can add some case study based like you are working the operation manager in the tat but then what would be the role in the in your organization something like that so that they have to think the realistic uh, application uh, it that is a uh, uh, well designed assessment policy however it will take time but uh, we are working on that i believe Yes, I have one more question. Where I find uh, uh, research is supposed to aid or support the teaching, but unfortunately, I find uh, uh, we do some compromise on teaching to do some research. So yes, 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 yes. And what I said, there is the, the, our subcontinent culture is like that. Uh, teaching, the first priority. So definitely, we have to compromise on the research. 
for the teaching. Maybe uh, I, I have a point to add here. Maybe the Please. reason is uh, our university system is oriented in such a way that either we can concentrate on uh, education or on research. Maybe yeah. uh, uh, maybe if we try to balance both the things, maybe in the long run uh, we could also do little justice to both the things. Uh, I would say that you know that now it's changing. If you yeah, look now it is changing. Yeah, it is changing. Yeah, it is the individuals who are taking uh, efforts yeah. to balance both the things. Yes, yeah, okay, I require but, from the management side also to look into this. Of course, there are few universities right now who are looking into both the things, but there are few who are still who have to come this way. Uh, you are absolutely right. You know, if you look the U.S., uh, like uh, their main target focus the research-based university. So their focusing point is different. They have a PhD scholars. They are producing the paper, working in the research. So they're busy for the research. But on the other hand, when you come to the Asian country, particularly the South Asian country, you can see this one that our main focus is for the teaching. Yes, it was. yes. So now it's changing, trying to balance. It is slowly Somebody, changing, yes, yeah, right. Slowly changing. But we have to appreciate it, particularly those yes, yes. who have the highest higher degrees from the overseas. This is our time. But the change, if it is accelerated a little more, maybe we will be doing much good to this. Yes. You know, I, I can share with you one thing is that I noticed that, uh, that Indian, uh, you know, that uh, Indian people, they are leading that uh, education and technology all over the world. So I noticed that the USA or the other countries, that most of the good researchers come from the India. Yes. But I am surprised when they are working in India, they are not the very, do the very good research. So it mm, means that they yeah. couldn't get enough time. So we need yes. the time for the research, some incentive as well. So there's the motivation for the research work. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question, please? Professor, okay. I have one more thing. Sorry. Yeah, the thing is, uh, of late, everybody is uh, speaking uh, employability of the students when it comes to the outcome of education. So everybody started moving towards um, uh, practice-oriented teaching, a practice-oriented learning kind of thing. So how do you think that the evaluation system could be of... Um, could be augmented in such a way that the students could be evaluated on how well they are uh, practice oriented before they go into the industry or before they go into that's good question that's good question you know that uh, we can keep the like project work like so that they can do some real life application and they can do this one we can give some internship so that they can do the real life application and uh, that would be the very important you know uh, if you theoretical knowledge is useless if you couldn't apply so our ultimate target is the application. Mm. So employable, due to the mental the employable, uh, employability, we have to think about these issues that how we can make sure that uh, real life application. Yes. But you know, I like to request one uh, one, uh, one thing that uh, as a faculty member, you have to also think. Nowadays, we like to emphasize uh, that you have to go for the entrepreneurship rather than uh, your own employability. Yes. Yeah, otherwise it will be very difficult to sustain our the graduates in the near future. So uh, we have to now, they have to, uh, they have to, we have to think uh, how we can in, in, insert this kind of methodology in their mindset that you should not think you will be the uh, empl employee, you have to think how you could become the employer, employer. how you could become the entrepreneur in near future. That could be more effective for them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. So is it possible? Can I ask one more question? Yeah, please, please, please. You just now said that uh, entrepreneurship is the key to the future for the students. Uh, but but uh, do do you uh, believe in this also that even faculties uh, need to be more entrepreneurial in order to uh, lead from the front uh, for inspiring the students? You know, that what I said that in the lecture, that everything sh should come from the faculty member. So they have to change their mindset at first, before they remain the teaching in the classroom. So okay. they have to be the more uh, practical oriented, they have to be the more experience on that one, entrepreneurship. So they can share their ex own experience or what they're observing, they can share. So the mindset will be, uh, will be starting to change from the faculty member, then it comes to the like, uh, students and graduates as well. Oh, thank, thank you. 
thank you sorry i i i missed out on that point probably yeah yeah i mentioned in this lecture uh, sir how yeah. do you feel about the quality of research happening in the asian countries i find uh, you know the publication from quality journal like transactions or uh, big journals is very difficult for us and uh, we just read it and understand it but we cannot able to do that quality of research happening in western countries so what do you find is the gap the main gap is that you know that uh, our understanding you know that uh, uh, what i noticed that most of the uh, uh, researchers particularly faculty member they are planning to submit the scopus in the journal or web of science in the journal just for the promotion just for the like uh, for their betterment position but they are not thinking that too much about the research you know that in order to think of the quality is is you have to provide some time extra time and it will take time time but our faculty member most of them they are so busy for the teaching so they don't have the enough time so at the very short time they are planning to publish the one paper and that time is sometimes difficult to publish a good journal but i what i said that i not i believe our subcontinent uh, faculty member they have this kind of ability and capability if they are passionate for publishing a good journal is possible but it will take time you know that in the scopus in the journal if you submit the paper it will take the one year uh, to publish the paper at least and the web of science will give you more than that one so now come to the question is that so you have to think about at first to write the paper it will take another 6 months uh, to write that kind of uh, standard paper quality paper so you can give the more time so you need that at least the one and a half year at least to publish the scopus in the journal or the web of science in the journal so now come to the question the timing western country this they they don't have the teaching suppose in the summer time no teaching only research and in the like the uh, remaining semesters they have only two lecture so it's very easy for them to spend the time on the research and you know research is a continuous process it is not possible to do the research within one night so uh, today you are doing some research you have to think write up and something and then you have to revise again revise so i believe if we give the time it's not very difficult for you to publish the quality papers in the different journal thank you sir thank you most welcome okay so before finishing i like to give you the concluding remark did you notice today i mentioned itsc itesc model integrated tertiary education supply management model if you are interested more about this model i like to request you can go to the google uh, you can search uh, itesc model there are lots of publication on that one or if you like to need more information about this one you just knock me through email I think you know my email address, or if you don't know my email, no problem. You can just go to the Google and write down my name. You can get the email address. And I always mention every every word that you know. The nowadays the global world is very small, so Google is very good helping tools. So you can write down the anything in the Google, you'll get all information from there. Um, uh, and another one thing I'd like to add, you know that we mentioned that uh, our target quality outcome. during the pandemic time we are facing this problem 